Hey guys, so let me ask you a question. Uh, what do you think happens when we give a monopoly of all magic events, including Commander Fest, which is a casual magic event, to Channel Fireball? Meaning there is no competitors and there is no reason not to just wreck the Commander players. Well, we get something like this. So Channel Fireball, Commander... Fest, which is Commander Festival, gives 6.37 packs per player and prizes. Pastimes, which isn't even a great event organizer, gave 36 packs per player. Now, assuming that 36 packs is about a box, you can probably get a box at an event at $70 from the district. I'm assuming it's got to be lower than $78, which is what I get a box for. So, yeah, you still make a good $40 even at the distributor level, but maybe these boxes are free boxes and then you make $120. So why does Channel Fireball have to be so greedy? It's because they can be greedy. Now, in the history of histories, so you might appreciate all of the, you Weds fans who are history majors may appreciate this. Uh, we don't typically give monopolies to a company because the company will abuse the people. If the company has no competition, why would they raise prices or why would they give more price support than they have to? And the answer is, is they are not going to. So the consumers are going to be screwed by the lack of competition and there will be collusion. So when you talk about um, this type of market structure we're now facing as Magic players, that's why I don't go to these events because the expected value of going is literally it's one six as less. So at the past times when they charge $120, you, they still make a profit. Like if they throw in a box for every person who enters, they still make a good hefty profit. So I went... And I looked and I wondered, you know, could there be other things maybe politically motivated that are, are causing the prices to increase? Because that's just price support. So price support goes down 600%, no, like a lot, right? So we're giving 600% less price support from an organization that we deem was not good enough to run this festival. Could there be other things that are making... Um, this more valuable like are there cost players for instance answer yes are there um non-binary sections where we have uh, discovery answer yes so when we deal with command fest seattle there's a lot of this other tacky stuff I'm, i imagine that uh players do not want but it is included in the package so we're going to take a look at a few packages and describe what exactly is happening here. How can the prize pool go from 36 pat and it's $120. So I'll say the $5 is inflation, okay? But we went from 36 packs of prizes per individual to six at a command festival. So something is not quite right. Like where is this money going? Or where are all the prizes going? The answer is into Channel Fireball's pockets. So recently, I've been sent clips by a Facebook fan or a Facebook follower of Huey Jensen streams, which I guess is now on the Channel Fireball YouTube. And it's literally the worst thing I've ever seen in Magic. Uh, it's someone who really does not like MTG Arena, playing MTG Arena for long periods of time. And now even the hardcore Channel Fireball fans are asking, why is this being posted? Why is this being posted? And Channel Fireball has always been a pretty good brand. But when you give a pretty good brand a monopoly, in the beginning, the prize support is going to be high because they want to show Reddit, mostly Reddit, and get some clout that, oh, hey, you know, things are actually getting better. But that's not how it ends up. Every monopoly ends or... Every monopoly ends in the same way, where players are getting fleeced and they don't really have any, because where are they going to go? Hey, you want to come to Command Fest? Yep. All right. Why don't you pay us $125 
and we'll give you six packs per person. All right, I sound good. I'm a casual player. I don't know better. So imagine like, you know, prize support is kind of a big issue at local game stores, right? People want as much prize support as possible. And for $5, people expect a pack, a pack and a half in prize support. And that's F&M, right? So why wouldn't they expect something similar, right? If a box retails for 100 or 100, let's even say 120, surely we can add a box to the prize support just like any local game store. Now, I know that you'd be like, oh, well, what about the building and all of this stuff? Well, I mean, a local game store has rent and things like that too. And in fact, the local game store is always there. So theoretically, they would actually pay more consistently as opposed to a one-time payment. I just find it kind of funny that these same players who are, you know, gr who would kill my local game and any local game store for not having enough prize support, right? So $5, they want a pack and a half. $10, they want free packs per person for $10. That these people are okay with what Channel Fireball is doing. It's mind-boggling, right? Like what is actually being offered here uh, is not worth it in my opinion. The so ring and things of that nature. I mean, the fact that they have a non-foil copy of so ring and a foil copy doesn't make any sense. Like, when did this start happening? Where the promo was actually uh, like a Grand Prix. The promo is a different promo, like depending on the package you buy. Like what? Anyway, my um, the whole concept of this is very simple. Monopoly bad. Magic has given a monopoly to China Fireball, who's making tons and tons of money off the players of, off the backs of very, very casual players. And this is exactly what I, if I was brand new to Magic, I would exactly expect to be taking advantage of in this way. You have one of the worst organizations, worst in event companies, pastimes, and even they have decided, and trust me, they want to they wanna make money just as badly, if not more, than Channel Fireball. And they have decided, hey, 36 plus packs make sense, including the promos and all this stuff, which they included with that offer. For you to go down to six packs is just greedy. Um, it's greedy. That's six times less, right? And for the player base to actually accept this and think this is a good idea and support. And, you know, we're, we're at six packs today. As long as the Monopoly continues, we'll be down to two packs and we'll be down to no prize support. Trust me, we will be down to no prize support before two years from now. It will just be your honor of being able to meet these celebrities. And that's where all the money is going. You can see that this is a commander party. So not only do you pay your $250 to enter, you get to pay $100 to get uh, all these things. Hors d'oeuvres, soft drinks, desserts, so ring promo, non-foil, sketched edge so ring playmat, deck box. So you get to go to Commander Party, Commander... Oh, of course, Tolarian Community College is there. That's why this event is so expensive. Seattle's iconic Museum of Pop Culture. Is that like the one in the airport? Like, seriously, like, is that the airport one? The greatest game ever made, surrounded by tons of timeless pop culture memorabilia. So, if you want to know where all the blanking money is going, it's going to these people that you see here. Because they have to be paid as guests, and my gosh, I'm surprised the mana source is not here. But I guess that, you, I mean, you can only ask for hospital bills one time in your life, right? I mean, the second time it happens, I don't think he gets the 100K. So let me conclude this by saying, they think we are idiots. They think we cannot do simple math. And the same people who are so adamant about grinding your local game store over every half pack of prize support don't say a word about this. Why is that the case? Because they're afraid. I mean, there's no other way for me to put it. They are actually afraid. What are they afraid of? They're afraid of backlash, of Channel 5. I mean, you don't mess with Channel 5, right? You don't mess with a monopoly. 
this reminds me of like Standard Oil and all the things that were, bad things that were happening back in 1920s or 1900s. And you just had monopolies. In the history of histories, a monopoly has never been good for the normal citizens. Because even if it is a very socially aware monopoly, you're going to lose. And that's the design. 